All right, so I've started the mine cart already. I've got most of my pieces cut. Um, you can see the angle on each side. I'm using uh, two by eights, and uh, I've got an eight and a half degree angle on all the sides. I have to still run it through the table saw and cut my eight and a half degree on the bottoms. I think I did it to this one. So you can see that it uh, angles also that way. And uh, then what I'll do is once I get all my pieces all cut, uh, I'll take a round over bit and kind of make these edges a lot more round and dimensional. And then I'll shoot this thing together. I still have to cut the very bottom and then, um, and then nail these things together. I'm also going to put a upper shelf in it so that it's not so deep. So that if we do put rocks in this, it's gonna, uh, we won't have to put as many rocks in with like a shelf there to fill most of the space. All right, I got all the pieces all shot together. I ended up just cutting an angle on the bottom edge and the top edge to make it flat again. But the middle section, I just left it normal. I just shot some long nails in there and glued it really well. There's the inside here. So the next thing to do is to um, put this quarter inch plywood on the edges so that it can simulate basically like some metal flat stock, some two inch metal flat stock. And uh, I'll shoot it on the edge on both sides and then down along the bottom. And then I'll uh, grind and age this up a little bit. I've used them in the past, but I also have these imitation rubber rivets that I can just shoot on and uh, we'll paint, paint those. I don't know if I'm gonna use the smaller ones or if I'm gonna go with the bigger ones. I'll have to ask Gina what she thinks. I also have these really big ones. They're like flat. So I got three different size to pick from. I kinda like the littler ones, but uh, like I said, we've used the big ones in the past to make it kinda more cartoony. But I think this one I want to try to make more realistic, so I may go with the smaller ones. I've started the minecart wheels. First I drew some circles tracing around a paint can lid on some 2x8 scrap pieces. Then instead of using a jigsaw, I just made several cuts using a chop saw to help keep some of those edges straight. Next I used a disc sander to round over all the cut edges, staying just outside all of my lines there. After that, what I did is I just found all my centers and marked the four points that I wanted to drill out using this one inch Forstner bit in the press. I just used the same setup that I had for making all the holes in the jail bars. Look at what we found in our mine cart. I say we Oh, are you going to scrap the wheel? We did strike gold. He's just throwing my hard work in the trash. He's all, no, do it again. That's junk. Right, Harrison? Junk! Junk! Harrison, <laughs> what are you in? Can you say mine cart? Mine cart! Mine cart! Whee! He's ready for his ride. Now, are you ready for an Indiana Jones ride? Or a Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs Careful, Adventure that's sharp. Mine ride? <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> I think that's more his speed right now. You found a little handle? Yeah, you don't need that either. Cool. Get rid of it. We've also got a cave wall going right here that some miners chipped out. We purchased some of these rocks. I know you guys have seen in some of our other pictures and videos and you're like, what are you going to do with that? So we um, modified this and remudded it and we're going to put two um, columns right there and right there, wood ones, like you would have in an old miner cave. Digging for gold. And then we've mudded these rocks last night. And then I'm aging a mine cart right now with my fancy dancy steel wool and vinegar method. It's gonna work out pretty awesome. So that's an update for you. And we'll probably see you when it's done because we haven't been filming well. <laughs> just kidding. I just finished the small track section for the mine cart. I notched the ends of some 2x4s for the ties. Then for the track, I shot two pieces of 1x3 together. 
I cut the top down to about two inches wide and then added the bottom which is just a three eighths thick piece of plywood left over from the bank facade. But here's a close up of those notches there so you can see the detail. Gina started painting the wheels and we didn't like how you could see the cracks in the wood so we went back, filled them with some spackle. Now they're ready for paint again. Here the cart's all aged up. She still has to go back and paint the metal edges but this thing's looking good. All right, so the mine cart is getting close to being done. I mounted the wheels there with the carriage bolt and then I just stuck some screws from behind to get those on. I put the track all together and then added the little rubber rivets. Um, if I would have thought before about the rivets, I would have put the screws that attach the track to the railroad ties underneath where I put the rivets and then that would have saved us some some prep time and stuff so now Gina's got to go back through and touch up all that stuff but there it is um, we're working on the rocks still that are gonna go inside there but we got uh, got everything all painted got a little section track for it I think it turned out pretty good I just spaced the track so that the uh, wheels fit inside there and then we can always lock it down with some screws going through the the inside of the wheels there into the side of the track if we need to. We also banged out another one of these that we've made in the past. Um, this one's going to be a stationary prop that the kids can do a little photo op with. I used um, gas pipe and um, cut the ends made sure there was no sharp edges, painted it black. There is a flange uh, attached to a shelf that's right about this level inside the box. And then what we did is we made the bottom uh, removable so that that can be attached to the floor. And then you just put the thing over the bottom and then put the screws in from the side. Real simple, it's hollow inside. Then we just aged the wood with vinegar and sprayed the TNT on there. Just adds another element to the scene that the people can interact with when they're taking their little pictures and stuff. All right, we've started some dynamite sticks here, which we've made before in the past. I just wanted to show real quick. I bought some dowels and uh, some three quarter PVC. Gina started painting it. And what I'm doing is I'm just squirting great stuff in the end. like so and then going through i was thinking about just using cork but if you put this in just sink it just a little bit below then the great stuff will dry it in place and that'll create our ends and then that way when she paints them um she can paint the ends too now these are just going to be uh the ones that we're going to tape up in a bundle of like seven uh, the rest of them, we don't have to plug the ends of them because they're going to be inside a wood crate. So I'm just plugging the ends of these real quick. All right, so Gina got all the dynamite sticks all painted, and then I liquid nailed them into place inside this crate, and then painted the little dynamite sign on there. We're probably going to have to screw the lid down and uh, fix the, the uh, sticks on top into place, but I wanted to wait until we get to location. But that's how it turned out. Not too bad. I just had to put the end, uh, the dowels in these and I left these ones hollow since you don't see them anyway. And uh, there's gonna be a couple crates that we put into place and, uh, and set the dynamite on top of there, so. Yeah. I just wanted to show you guys, I'm getting ready to lock this little dynamite crate to the floor here. And what I've done is I've nailed some one by three together and uh, I drilled a couple of anchors into the floor and then tightened the bolt down. So these are locked into place. And then what I'll do is I'll just tip this over and slide it up and over these things. And then I can take some uh, screws and then screw it in through the side and that'll lock it down to the floor so it doesn't move. That's a real easy way to lock down your props if you ever wanted to do that and you're willing to drill some holes in the concrete. All right, so I got the screws back in through the side and that's what it looks like all finished. And what I did 
as I lock down that crate down the hallway. I got the detonator box and then the mine cart. Um, that's all locked down. Got the mine wall in place with the little fake timbers. Same thing on this one. It had a plate uh, underneath that it just slides up and over. That's all lagged down. And then on this one back here, you can't really see it. It's kind of dark, but I put it in the back. You can see kind of in that railroad tie there. And I've got one over here on this side. It's kind of dark, but I got the mine cart set up. And then, like I said, they'll be able to take pictures behind the TNT box. And then here's from this angle, crate. And I think what he's gonna have him do is putt from here and try to get all the way through all these crates and then the hole is that orange hole there down at the end right below the railroad track painting. Look at Gina painted some gold veins in the rock. We've struck gold. We have a couple of other videos of making mine carts and mining areas if you guys are interested. We also have lots of other videos that have to do with Western stuff, so be sure to check that out. As always, I'd like to thank all of you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe, and we'll see you next time.